in preparation for a very exciting fall semester. According to our surveys directly with students, we know that the number one concern of international students is health and well being. It's not only about maintaining physical health, but of course also about maintaining mental health. Both are equally important to be successful. We do know that the US healthcare is complicated and oftentimes confusing. It's critical for you to learn how to navigate and use your university resources. And we're really fortunate that today's session provides clear information about specific next steps for you. We also want to assure you that hundreds of students do successfully navigate healthcare and well being every year. I also want to share a few details in preparation for the webinar. The webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the ISSS website. We recommend using the gallery view or speaker view. General information will be provided and we also expect that you may need to reach out to an office about a specific question you may have. The structure is that the first 30 minutes will be panelists introducing themselves and reviewing general information related to health and wellness, highlighting aspects related to the pandemic. We have fantastic partners. They are Health Emergency Response Office, Boynton Health Services, Office of Student Health Benefits, and the Office of Housing and Residential Life. The second 30 minutes will be a question and answer session that is taken from the common pre-submitted questions during registration. Questions can also be submitted via the Q&A function. The Q&A function is located at the bottom of your screen and you have the ability to submit questions anonymously. At this time, I'd like to introduce Maurice Perkins Director of Marketing and Communications at Boynton Health. Greetings and uh, welcome. I am Maurice Perkins, Director of, Director of Marketing and Communications at Boynton Health. We've been taking care of university students at Boynton Health for over 100 years, and we're used to working with people who may be unfamiliar with the process of scheduling appointments. Here at Boynton Health, we're committed to empowering you to take your health in your own hands. So let us be that first call if you're not feeling well. Boynton Health is a comprehensive college health service where you can receive almost all the care you need while you're here at the university. Uh, that includes pharmacy, uh, physical therapy, and, and a nutrition clinic as well. All of these clinics are located in one building right on campus with care teams who work together. And don't worry, our health care providers are not students or grad students. They're all accredited medical professionals with years of experience in their respective, respective fields. Now, the East Bank Minneapolis location is our main clinic and offers all the services that I mentioned. We also have a smaller St. Paul clinic, which offers primary care, mental health, physical therapy, nutrition, and a gopher quick clinic service. Our clinics are open Monday through Friday during general business hours. And if you ever need help outside of Boynton's hours, we have after hours care uh, information on our website, uh, which is boynton.umn.edu. And we have uh, uh, a nurse line, 24 hour nurse line available, 24 seven nurse line available for you as well. There are several ways to access care at Boynton Health. You can call to schedule an appointment and some, but not all types of appointments can be scheduled online. The urgent care clinic specializes in medical problems that should be seen in a more immediate way than regular, regularly scheduled appointments. Uh, these conditions include severe headaches, flu, frostbite, work injuries, nausea, and many others. Again, we do have a 
seven nurse line available. And you can call anytime you have questions about these symptoms. Um, if you need self-care tips or if you're unsure if you should, should be seeing a doctor. I'm aware there's a lot of information that's going to be coming to you today. Before I move forward, I want to give you a direct link of information uh, regarding our immunization and vaccination requirements. So if you're viewing from a computer, pull out your cell phones and scan the QR code um, to be able to access that information and I'll go through some of that information with you. So I'll give you a few moments to do that. All right. The university does have an immunization requirement. Uh, all students born after 1956 are required to have the following immunizations, diphtheria and tetanus, COVID, measles, mumps, rubella. Um, we also recommend meningitis, HPV, hepatitis B, and the annual flu shot and flu clinics are held each fall. You will need to locate the form on the MyU to self-report the dates you have received these immunizations. Once that form has been completed, you've satisfied the requirement. If you still need, to, to, if you still need required vaccinations or would like any of the ones that we recommend, they can be taken care of at Boynton as well. Reporting a vaccination, um, you can report it in the MyU. Um, MyU informate the MyU info, then click on report a vaccination or exemption, and you will receive an email with a link to report uh, closer to the start date of the semester. Now, holes um, will come. Uh, a registration will be placed. A registration hole will be placed on your account, preventing registration for the fall if you do not report your vaccination status by September the 9th. Uh, non who approved uh, should get vaccinated. Um, medical exemptions uh, are, for Boynton, uh, are from Boynton or your home doctor. Uh, Non-English vaccination documentation uh, exemptions must be translated. And students do not need to provide proof unless they are student staff. Testing can happen through Boynton three to five days after arrival, and students responsible for completing tests students responsible for completing tests um, have no requirements for for proof. And U.S. currently is a very high COVID transmission currently. Boynton also offers COVID testing and vaccines, and you can call the clinic to schedule your appointment as early as today. One of the largest public health initiatives um, through Boynton is the Share the Air campaign. The university is a smoke and tobacco free campus, both inside and outside. This policy prohibits the use of e-cigarettes as well. We're working to uh, address food insecurity on campus. Uh, another um, excuse me, any student can receive fresh and healthy food for free. Um, so the Boynton Health Nutritious Youth Food Pantry is open three days of every month during the school year and it's located, um, actually we're moving from the second floor of Kaufman to the first floor of Kaufman um, and the, the Kaufman Student Center. Boynton Health operates the Gopher Chauffeur service as well. We offer free safe rides home for any students. Multiple vans operate throughout the week and rides home to residents in any neighborhood near the campus. Uh, I'll give you a few moments to jot down the phone number, but it will be available on our website as well. The phone number is 612-388-6911. Rides begin on Thursday of Welcome Week and run throughout the school year. So just call the number about 30 minutes before you want to be picked up and go for chauffeur will provide a free safe ride home. Uh, we also have a mobile app that's available for download as well. One of our most popular programs is PAWS, which stands for Pet Away Worry and Stress. Thera therapy dogs, K-9 
cats, bunnies, chickens, and even a mini horse. They walk, hop, or trot on campus every week, and these animal assisted interactions help reduce student stress. As another form of stress relief, Boynton Health also offers free yoga, Tai Chi classes for all, and Tai Chi, cha, tai Chi classes for all students. You can check our website for details and schedules. Now, students play an important role in our health promotion efforts on campus. For example, we offer a health advocates program where health advocates are students appointed to as health resources in their residence halls, apartment communities, fraternities, as well as sororities. Uh, Boynton Health understands that it's important for you to connect with peers on campus. You can answer health questions and provide, they can answer health questions and provide resources. Uh, some of these health uh, advocates, um, excuse me, all of the health advocates are first aid and CPR certified. They respond to common health related issues. Uh, they share information and prevention strategies, refer to campus health resources where, uh, where available. Uh, they distribute cold, cough, pain medicine, cough drops, bandages, safer sex supplies, and much more. Here are some of the other health promotion resources that we offer. Nutritious, nutrition checkups, stretch check-ins, safer sex supplies, and recovery on campus. To schedule nutrition or stress check-ins, visit Boynton's website. To access Safer Sex Supplies, contact your student health advocate or visit boynton.umn.edu forward slash condoms. And also Safer Sex Supplies are available throughout the building um, on our East Bank location. Uh, Rock, which is Recovery on Campus, is a student group that provides resources and support for university students in recovery through regular meetings and social activities. Again, there's no way to remember all the information I've shared, especially uh, when you actually need it. So visit our website, boynton.umn.edu, or you can scan this particular QR code for all that I've shared with you today, as well as much, much more, including you can book your appointment through this QR code as well. And you'll also see the URL in the chat. We'll transition to our Office of Student Health Benefits and have Greg Thurston, the Director of the Office of Student Health Benefits, explain health insurance options in more detail. Thanks, Maurice. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. And hello, everybody. My name is Greg Thurston. And as Marie said, I'm the director of the Office of Student Health Benefits. Today, I want to highlight health insurance requirements for the University of Minnesota, as well as some items related to health insurance in the United States that may be different from health insurance in your home country. Health insurance in the United States is complicated, even for those of us who were born here and raised here. In the few minutes we have now, I can't make you experts on it. Um, there's a lot more information on the Student Health uh, Benefits website. The booklet with all the health uh, coverage is known as a summary plan description. It's actually over 100 pages long and is posted on our website. You're likely going to have additional questions in the future. So the Office of Student Health Benefits contact information is provided here. And I want to assure you that we're committed to helping you with any questions you have now or in the future. Next slide, please. First, it's important for you to realize that unless you qualify for a waiver, the University of Minnesota requires you to be on either the university's student health benefit plan or the university's graduate assistant health plan. This requirement has been in effect for over 40 years and applies to all university students, both domestic and international. It's necessary so that you can focus on academics and not worry about whether you can obtain medical services if any health issues arrive. Waivers from coverage on the university plan are only granted if you remain in your home country for the semester or have US employer-based health insurance or your home country has an arrangement with the university which qualifies you for a waiver. 
Only the countries of Oman, Saudi Arabia, Norway, United Arab Emirates, and Kuwait have arrangements allowing waivers. If you qualify for a waiver, you should email the Office of Student Health Benefits for assistance with the, with the process. Next slide, please. If you're a graduate fellow or graduate assistant with a qualifying appointment from the university, you should enroll in the Graduate Assistant Health Plan. The university pays a significant portion of the premium for the graduate assistants, so your contribution is very low. At the beginning of the semester, your account is charged $171.96. If your appointment is 50%, then you pay no additional premium. If your appointment is less than 50%, you pay an additional amount for the semester based on your appointment level. You must complete an enrollment form to enroll in the Graduate Assistant Health Plan. To enroll, go to shb.umn.edu and select Graduate Assistance, then select Enrollment. Complete and submit the form to the Office of Student Health Benefits. It's important to note that if you do not actively enroll in the Graduate Assistant Health Plan, then that will result in you automatically being enrolled in the Student Health Benefit Plan and charged its full cost of coverage. So I want to absolutely stress that if you are a graduate assistant, make sure you go through the process to enroll in the graduate assistant health plan. Now, graduate students without appointments and all international undergraduate students not qualifying for the waiver must enroll in the student health benefit plan. The cost of the student health benefit plan is $1,734 per semester and is billed to your account at the beginning of the semester. To enroll in the Student Health Benefit Plan, click Enroll Me on the insurance plan communication that was sent to your MyU account. Next slide, please. In the United States, even with health insurance coverage, an individual may have additional out-of-pocket costs when seeking medical care. Copays are small fixed dollar amounts that are charged each time you go to the doctor or have a prescription, with the insurance plan paying the remainder of the cost of the visit or prescription. When you have services outside Boynton, you may need to pay a deductible and coinsurance. Deductibles are annual dollar amounts which must be paid for services before the insurance plan begins paying for services. Coinsurance is a percentage of the claim that you must pay with the insurance then paying the remainder. However, all the plans have a maximum annual out-of-pocket amount so that once you reach that maximum amount, the insurance pays 100% for all remaining eligible expenses. The Office of Student Health Benefits has detailed information on its website showing coverage levels for the different types of services for each of the health plans. Next slide, please. Our plans are designed so that most individuals have very low out-of-pocket costs when obtaining medical services. Boynton Health is usually your lowest cost and most convenient alternative for medical care. In fact, most services provided at Boynton result in no out-of-pocket cost for those on the student health benefit plan and just a $10 copay for those on the graduate assistant health plan. The medical identification card you receive from the insurance company will have their website information enabling you to find other available in-network providers when needed, such as if you require immediate care when Boynton is closed or if you require a service not provided by Boynton. But again, I would wanna stress for everybody, Boynton should be your first call because in most cases, it's going to be significantly cheaper than um, any other provider. Our insurance company is called Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota and the provider network is called AWARE. You'll need your medical identification card when obtaining services or picking up prescriptions at places other than Boynton. If using a provider other than Boynton, it is important to confirm that they're in network before obtaining services, as you often must pay more out of pocket costs when utilizing providers who are not in network. 
It typically takes a couple of weeks to receive your medical identification card. You do not need to wait for your medical medical identification card to schedule a COVID vaccination appointment. If you need other medical services prior to receiving your card, please contact the Office of Student Health Benefits for assistance with your coverage. We're here to assist you and help answer any questions you may have about your medical coverage. The next presenter is Katie Olson-Williams, who will provide important information on international early arrival housing and residential life. Thank you. Hi and welcome. I'm Katie Olson Williams. I'm an assistant director here in Housing and Residential Life, and I use she, her pronouns. Housing and Residential Life provides on campus housing to students in 13 different communities, including four apartment and nine resident halls, in addition to co ops and townhomes for graduate students and families. If you're still looking for housing for fall, you may apply online. Move in for fall semester is August 15th for the apartments and August 29th through the 30th for the residence halls. We do offer international early arrival housing, uh, whether you live on campus or not this fall. To reserve a space, go to our website and submit your reservation. Housing is available July 25th through August 26th. If you live on campus in the fall, you will be able to stay in on-campus housing beyond the 26th of August. The cost is $35 per night and your student account will be billed in September and only for the nights that you stay. So if you make a reservation and are unable to come, that is totally okay. If you are um, living on campus and develop any symptoms related to COVID, you are exposed or test positive, um, we do ask that you follow the protocols provided on our website. Uh, masks are no longer required inside university owned facilities. Um, however, students, faculty, staff, and guests are welcome and um, able to wear them should they choose. We strongly encourage you to get tested for COVID um, either through Boynton or another testing location. Um, we may have some rapid tests available, however, more information to come. Please follow our website, uh, umn.edu slash housing slash COVID-19 uh, for more information. Um, we will be updating that right now. It is our summer information and we will have it um, updated again um, for fall semester specifically. If you are feeling ill, please, again, don't uh, go to class or work, um, any locations. Um, if you're not feeling well until you do get tested, make sure you do wear a mask. Um, but again, our website will have the most updated information for you there. Um, we, with early arrivals, we are excited uh, to be partnering with ISSS to offer some events during early arrival to get you connected to campus and other students in the community. So if you are staying with us with, uh, for early arrivals, we will provide you more information very soon. We are in the planning stages of that. So more to come, but really hope that those programs will help you connect with others, have fun and relax. In addition, our community does value the health, safety, and personal well-being of all residents and staff. Racist behavior or stereotyping is not tolerated. If you experience harassment, xenophobia, or discrimination, please reach out to your community advisor or residence director. You may also submit a report to the Bias Response and Referral Network. I am now going to turn it back over to Marina with ISSS. Thank you, Katie, for uh, introducing us to the International Early Arrival Housing. And so before uh, we move on to the next part, um, I would like to introduce the Q&A portion um, for this webinar. It should last for about 30 minutes. You can submit questions anonymously, but we prefer that you submit them um, with your name. So if we do need to follow up, we will be able to do an individual follow up. Um, right now, um, a lot of you have been submitting questions on the Q&A. We'll be able to answer some of them live um, or some of our resources have already started answering them. And again, we may not be able to answer all of your questions today. Uh, we will be able to answer uh, most of the questions that you have submitted in the pre-registration portion of this webinar. Uh, we do have a staff member moderating the chat, but please submit your questions again through the Q&A. There is a button at the bottom of your screen and you will be able to submit yours. While I wait for some of you to submit your questions, I'm going to pass it on to my colleague, Emily Goose, to talk a little bit about how to stay connected 
with ISSS. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Emily Goose, and I am one of our international counselors here at ISSS. As you're preparing for your arrival here in the United States, you're probably going to have a lot of questions along the way. I would encourage you when you have questions to please reach out to us at issnew at umn.edu. That is our um, email for all new student questions and we're happy to connect with you that way. We also have a specific website for new students. So we encourage you to read through issss.umn.edu slash new to get all the information that you need about arrival, health here in the United States and any other requirements that you are going to have prior to your arrival here in the United States or other at the University of Minnesota. Additionally, uh, with everything relating to COVID, things change from, t you know, all the time. So we have a travel page that is specific to traveling during COVID times. One of the latest updates as of June 12th is that COVID tests are no longer required for entry to the United States. Before you needed to provide proof of a negative COVID test, but the presidential proclamation has eliminated that requirement. Um, however, you do still need a COVID vaccine. And finally, I want to introduce you to our next event, our, our next Global Gopher Experiences event. Our next webinar will be held in two weeks and it is Leveling Up for Career Success. You can register for that event at z.umn.edu slash GGE2022. All right, I'm going to pass it back to Marina. Right. Thank you, Emily, for showing us how to stay connected with ISSS. And now we're moving on to our questions and answer portion of the webinar. Uh, so my first questions or my first set of questions uh, will be for Leslie uh, Gray from Boynton uh, Health Services. And I have three questions for you. So I'm going to read them and then I know you have some uh, you have some prepared some answers for us. Uh, the first question is, what is the COVID environment on the University of Minnesota campus and in Minnesota right now? My other question is what vaccines are accepted at the university and what kind of evidence do we need in order to prove that we have been vaccinated? I know some of you have been asking this question. Um, what if it's not in English? I know Maurice covered a little bit about this um, in his presentation earlier today. And lastly, if I'm going to get vaccinated in my home country before the arrival in the US, um, in this case, do I still need to self quarantine right after arrival? So Leslie. Thank you, Marina. Um, your first, the first question, COVID-19. COVID-19 on campus, currently uh, there were 64 cases of COVID um, the last week of June on the University of Minnesota Twin Cities campus, which is about twice as many as the week before. This does not include cases detected through at-home test kits or tests done off campus. Cases have been going up and down over the past few weeks. The easiest place to monitor university cases, um, they're published on the campus dashboard, which the link is included on this slide. Um, we'll get the link in there. Um, right, Marina, in the chat, we give the link for the dashboard. Um, vaccinations, over 96% of our campus community is vaccinated. In Minnesota, 73% of people aged five and older can have, have completed their vaccine series and children over six months, six months and older can now get the vaccine. Some groups are eligible for booster doses. As of July 8th, the seven day average cases in, in Minnesota was 725. However, this does not include home test results, so it's on, it is likely an underestimate of cases. In general, COVID in Minnesota is less severe than it has been in past waves, but it's still widely circulating across the state. For the most up-to-date information, you can visit safecampus at umn.edu. And accept, accepted COVID vaccines. Any uh, vaccine that is, uh, the are two approved vaccines by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Well, there are three, Janssen, which is a single dose vaccine, and then Pfizer and Moderna, which are a two dose series. And then 
also accepted are any uh, vaccines that are listed for emergency use by the World Health Organization. Those include Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, Covaxin, Covishield, Sinopharm, Sinovac, Novavax, and Covavax. And the next question, what is acceptable proof of COVID vaccination? Um, this information is from the CDC. You know, there are a couple different options, verifiable records, which uh, contain a QR code or a digital pass via smartphone. Uh, Non-verifiable paper records are like printouts of uh, a vaccination certificate or like a vaccination card that we um, give out here in the US, um, something along that same lines. Non-verifiable digital records, which are which would be a, a photo of your record, uh, download the vaccine record from the provider that you got the vaccination from, or a mobile phone, um, if it's a mobile phone app without a QR code and you still have um, manufacturer and dates listed for when you receive the vaccine. And as I just mentioned, what proof of vaccination has to include personal identifiers, name, date of birth, the source where you received a vaccination, which would be if it's from a public health agency, government agency, or a, any vaccine provider, and it must include the manufacturer and date of vaccination. And as Maurice had mentioned earlier, if it is um, not in English, that should be translated. Thank you, Leslie, for uh, providing a comprehensive uh, answers to COVID-19 specific questions. Um, my next part of the Q&A portion will be to Greg. Uh, we'll be, uh, we had some questions about health insurance. Uh, so my first question to you, Greg, is when does student health benefits plan start? Um, if I land in the US before that date, do I need to have some other health insurance in the meantime? Yeah, so officially the school year, of course, is starting August 22nd, and that's when sort of the normal start of the insurance fall plan year would be. However, we do cover international students from the moment they come into the country. So if you're going to need, um, you know, coverage uh, prior to, or excuse me, if you're going to need uh, services provided prior to that August 22nd date, just contact the Office of Student uh, Health Benefits and we'll get your coverage started for the day that you need services, which, you know, could be the day you land um, in the country even. Thank you, Greg. It seems like even though there are specific dates, uh, most of our resources are willing to accommodate our international students, knowing that they're arriving uh, throughout the month of August. So um, the next definitely question... we don't we want to we want to make sure people have coverage because, as I said, you know, in in the United States, you really have to have health insurance. So we will make sure you have it, um, you know, from the point that you land in the country. Definitely. Thank you, Greg. Uh, my next question is, can my family members or children under the age of 18 get the COVID vaccine? Yeah, that's uh, I, I think Leslie had pointed out uh, that it, the, the vaccines are approved now for even infants. And so definitely anybody who's covered on the the plan, you know, the plan would would be fine with paying any kind of a uh, uh, dosage fee or whatever that there is. Um, yeah, so there's there's no problem with that. Right. Um, so I know that um, we cover a little bit about immunizations, but can I also get them done after I reach the U.S.? And most importantly, will my insurance cover it? Yeah, right now, I mean, there is there is no cost for the for the COVID vaccination. It's it's covered a hundred percent. So members have no cost for for that. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Greg. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go over- Actually, Marina, let me oh. let me answer one more because I inadvertently sure. I inadvertently in the chat said I was gonna answer one live. Oh, please go ahead. The, the, there was a question about the graduate assistant plan and whether they could enroll in person. And definitely, if you need help filling out any enrollment forms or anything like that, the Office of Student Health Benefits is located in Boynton. Feel free to stop by and we have people that will help you uh, complete the enrollments. 
Well, thank you very much, Greg. And I'll definitely look at the Q&A as well in just a little bit to um, assign them to some of our presenters as well. So my next set of questions is for Katie um, regarding housing. Um, I have one specific question, and I know you cover a little bit about this as well, uh, but could you remind us again, are there any COVID-related health policies while living on campus that we should be aware of? Sure, thanks, Marina. Um, there currently really are no specific requirements. Um, certainly, if you want to wear a mask, you are welcome to, and um, a lot of folks are still wearing their masks and continuing to maintain social distancing. Um, the one thing I would say is that if you're on campus um, and are feeling ill, making sure that you get tested, making sure that you are not um, going into large groups um, until you know whether or not you are positive, you know, so kind of that self-isolation um, or quarantine um, when you're able. Certainly, we have a lot of resources on our website, um, and we'll continue to update that as we get further guidance. And so please do refer to the website for proper steps of what to do um, if you're not feeling well, if you are um, exposed, or if you do test positive. Okay. Um, Katie, I do have one more question for you about um, early arrival housing. Uh, I had a student ask about dining services. Will those be available during that time? So dining, um, as of right now, will be open in Pioneer, I believe through roughly August 4th, 13th, maybe. Um, and then there will be a period that our dining centers will not be open. Um, there might be a few retail locations open on campus. Um, otherwise, dining will open up again um, just prior to opening um, for the fall semester. So other resources, of course, will be kind of in the community area. So Stadium Village um, or Dinky Town neighborhoods. There are a number of restaurants and places available. Um, there are also options in terms of taking public transportation to um, a grocery store. There are a couple, you know, there's a CVS or Walgreens and a Target Express that has a few groceries. Um, otherwise, um, encourage, you know, use of the light rail um, in order to go secure some, some additional grocery items should you want and need. There is a kitchenette available in Centennial Hall where early arrival is being housed um, that you are able to use. The front information desk will have some cooking items. However, we don't provide, you know, plates and silverware, that sort of thing. Um, but we will have pots and pans available um, should you want to cook in the kitchen. Thank you, Katie. And then uh, one more additional reminder to all of us. If early housing ends on the 26th, um, where can students stay from the 26th to the 28th um, when they're supposed to be moving into the residence halls? Yep, so if you are staying, living with us in the fall, we will keep you, um, depending on where you're living in the fall on campus, we will provide more information to you specific to your assignment for the fall. You will be able to stay on campus. If you, however, are living off campus in the fall, the 26th is the last date that we can provide housing um, in order to have the rooms ready for our fall move in um, two days later. Great. Well, thank you very much, Katie. Uh, I'm going to move on to some of the questions regarding uh, COVID uh, vaccines and uh, uh, some paperwork. So I'll invite Leslie or Catherine to come back on stage. Uh, one of the questions is, uh, do I need to bring copies of vaccination certificate with us to be presented at the university? I know we covered this information previously, but I'd like to reiterate the answer again. Um, COVID, you should... Um... Yes, upload proof of vaccination for COVID, your COVID series. Okay, um, and then the next question is, um, the translation of my certificate of vaccination, does it have to be done by a professional translator or do I have to consider another important information, assuming that this is when they have to submit actual copies um, of their vaccination proof? That I would have to follow up on if it has to be an official um, translation. Okay. Uh, I, the, uh, actually, this question would be good to have emailed to COVID-19 vaccine at umn.edu, and we can get that answered. Um, we can get an answer to that question. Okay. Uh, and then um, 
And then the uh, next question on COVID vaccine, if I have completed this immunization in my home country, do I need to retake it again at Boynton? No, you do not if it is a WHO approved vaccine. Thank you. Um, and then um, I uh, don't have any more additional uh, questions. Uh, uh, I have one for uh, Boynton specifically. Do I need documents uh, for vaccine other than the COVID vaccination? And this is referring to immunizations. Can I, can I jump in on this one? Yes. Okay, so if I, can I just, I know I'm being, um, can I just share my screen real quick? Emily, sure. is that okay? So I'm going to share my screen with all of you because I think um, what it, this you're asking really good questions and a lot of this is on the web page and so I'm just going to share their web page real quick. Um, let me go to this here. So this is the Boynton web page right here that Marish shared. And they have, a, it's boynton.umn.eu, it is immunization requirements. If you go down here, there's two important things to see. How to complete your COVID vaccine requirement. And then as Marie shared, you click on it and, and you can see you have to go into the MyU system, okay? So that's one system you go into. If, and then it says how to complete your non-COVID related vaccine requirement. And that is a, a little bit different. So there's a COVID way you complete COVID requirements. And then down here, you'll see that there is um, an online immunization form, or you can do a, a printable one. So when you click on the online student form, you'll see that it's a it's at basically just a, a um, well, we call it a Google form, but it's a, it's a, just a completion form. And if you go through here, you can see exactly um, what information you're going to need. Um, and I, if you go through it, it'll show you what you need. Um, with this, though, it, it doesn't require any upload of documents. You're you're porting out when um, when you've had these requirements. So if you're not sure about uh, what you need for a, any non-COVID immunizations or vaccinations, you can go to this form, go through it and, and see what you need as well. So I just wanted to clarify it because um, then of course you can also keep reading through um, and find out what you can get when you arrive, and then you can again see what are the required vaccinations. So these are all things that have been covered in the presentation, but if you're not sure, you feel like we're going through it quite quickly, this is a really great website that Boynton has. So, and I think this is the one that, um, Maurice, uh, this is the one that you were, were trying to get people to as well. So I will stop sharing and um, let you uh, resume the the, the presentation. Thank you, Beth, for sharing that with all of us. It seems like there was a lot of questions around uh, immunization forms and then COVID forms as well. Um, I know that's a lot of questions, so continue to reaching out to the campus resources around it. Um, we are going to be wrapping up some of the Q&A questions. We don't have any more questions coming up. Um, is that, you're welcome. Someone posted, thank you. Um, and I, what I'm going to be doing is um, I'm going to be adding all of the links um, and the emails and the contact information for all of them. But again, uh, thank you so much for attending the International Health and Wellness webinar today. We look forward to seeing you all on campus uh, in August soon. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll be able to address all of your questions. And I know you're going to have many, many more questions. All the people today that presented are willing and able to share um, their responses or connect you to the right resources. We may not know all of the answers right away, but we do know the right people that can get us to the right answers as well. For specific questions about COVID testing and vaccine availability, you can contact Boynton Health directly at bhquest at umn. Uh, dot edu, or um, you can also email uh, the COVID-19 vaccine um, at umn.edu's uh, address. For questions around health insurance, you can email the Office of Student Health Benefits at umnshbo 
at umn.edu. For questions around housing, you may contact them at the Office of Housing and Residential Life at housing at umn.edu. And then if you don't know where to start or you have multiple questions and you just need to remember one key email, that would be issnew at umn.edu uh, for new students. Or if you're a continuing student joining us today, that would just be the regular ISSS at umn. Uh, the edu account again thank you to all of our presenters that have been able to make this webinar happen for maurice perkins leslie gray and um, catherine harrison from the health emergency response office and boynton health services to greg thurston from the office of student health benefits katie also williams from the office of housing and residential life and then our isss staff beth eisen c barbara kapler and emily goose so again thank you so much for being a part of this um, we will uh show you a quick video right after this but the webinar is done um, and if you have any questions email us at issnew at umn.edu and we will see you at the next one at the leveling up for career success welcome to the university of minnesota we are boynton health and we're excited to help you get a strong start to your college career here we understand that it can be overwhelming to take control of your health care needs that's why we're committed to helping empower students like yourself there are a variety of clinics you can choose from here at Boynton, from primary care, urgent care, go for quick clinic, dental and vision services, gynecology and gender care, nutrition services, physical therapy, immunization, and a pharmacy. And as a student, you can access most of these services at little to no cost. So now that you know what Boynton Health has to offer, you might be wondering how to get treatment. There are many ways to access care. You can make an appointment by calling, stopping by in person, or visiting my Boynton online patient portal. Through this patient portal, you can access immunization records, receive test results, and update your patient profile. Not sure what kind of help you need? No worries, we have a 24-hour nurse line available to help you access the right care. Of course, after you make your appointment, you might be worried about how much it will cost. As a college student, finances can be a huge concern. Most students can receive care at little to no cost. You must meet two criteria. You need to pay the student services fee for the semester that you're enrolled in, and you need to be on an insurance plan, either a private plan or the university's plan. Most students must have insurance to be able to attend the university. The plan offered through the university is called the Student Health Benefit Plan. It is charged to your student account alongside the student services fee and tuition. Uh, the Student Health Benefit Plan fee varies yearly, so be sure to check out our website for the most up-to-date cost. You might choose to opt out of the Student Health Benefit Plan and might be worried about paying for Boynton's health services. Don't worry. Regardless of what kind of insurance you have, most students can be seen at our clinic at little to no cost. Boynton Health also does a lot of public health outreach across campus. We work to promote the physical, social, and emotional well-being of all students across campus inside and outside the walls of the clinic. Be sure to take advantage of programs like Nutritious U, Food Pantry, and Go for Chauffeur. If you're feeling overwhelmed, you can pet away worry and stress with PAUSE. If you're a student living in a residence hall on campus or a fraternity and sorority, talk with your student health advocate. These students are first aid and CPR certified and can help with other common health related issues by referring you to other campus health resources and sharing information. These students provide cough drops, bandages, safe for sex supplies, cold and cough and pain medicine. Other health promotion resources also include stress check-ins, safe for sex supplies, and recovery on campus, which is a student group that provides support and resources for university students in recovery through social activities and regular meetings. Boynton Health offers individual therapy, couples and group therapy, and student counseling services. We also offer stress check-ins. Stress check-ins provide an opportunity for you to talk through stress in your life, come up with solutions, and connect with campus resources. You can find us on the East Bank Minneapolis campus and the St. Paul campus. We're open Monday through Friday during general business hours. Don't hesitate to give us a call or visit us at the clinic. You can find more information at boynton.umn.edu. Be sure to visit MyU to fill out the immunization form and the insurance declaration form. Thank you, everybody. It's been a joy to have you, and we'll see you in two weeks. Goodbye. Bye.